Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to this episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in our part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere our new movie or TV series that is debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland where Irish eyes are smiling. And up for discussion this week, it's a new type of a, a Western type uh, TV series uh, set back, set in the to sort of the U United States prairies, uh, dare I say, but it's a Canadian a production filmed in Cal Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's uh, season one, uh, 10 episodes. It has two seasons in total, but uh, season one is coming our way here on channel Paramount uh, Plus. Uh, the first episode did debut to great success on June the 8th. It features an all-star cast, for, uh, including Michael Dorman, Juliana Gwill, Skywalker Hughes and Cameron Pleva. Based about the Pickett family, uh, it follows uh, Gay Morton and his family during a change in political and climate uh, scene in a small uh, rural town. The series is called uh, Joe Pickett. I'm delighted to be joined by one of the stars of the show. He plays the character Deputy McLennan, the one and only uh, Chad Rook. And uh, Chad, uh, Joe Pickett, uh, an interesting sort of a, a, a take on, uh, dare I say, the, the life of a, a, a game warden in the United States, uh, just showing uh, how challenging an environment it can be for someone working in circumstances, dare I say, where you're not, dare I say, the most popular man in town in terms of all different aspects of it sort of rural society uh, some mm -hmm. parts of the communities like you and dare I say some parts of the communities as we see in Joe Pickett uh, de definitely don't like you yeah no uh, I mean I think if you take the concept of the, of the show which is following you know the game warden Joe Pickett um, you, you come to realize how dangerous of a job that actually is and, and, and with times being as hard as they are in economies and, and with society right now uh, you just take in into take that into effect as well. I mean, if you're out in the middle of absolutely nowhere with a hunter, for example, who is poaching or whatnot, and 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 you're about to ticket them or or you know uh, ask them for licenses that they may not have, well, it, it's uh, it's their livelihood a lot of times on on what they're why they're doing that. So if a game warden comes up to them and you know, wants to take that livelihood away from them um, because, you know, they're doing illegal activity or whatnot. Um, I mean, it, it, you can get into a pretty sticky and, and hairy situation quite quickly. So it, it, you come to realize how dangerous that role can actually be, uh, especially in modern America right now. And uh, Chad, you might be able to tell our audience or enlighten us about your character, Deputy McLennan. How does he uh, fit in in terms of uh, Joe Pickett? Is he sort of his psychic, his uh, buddy in arms, or uh, dare I say, is their relationship a bit frictious? Uh, well, um, so Deputy McLennan and Joe Pickett, we are nonstop butting heads. Uh, we are... I'm in a way kind of uh, his arch nemesis kind of thing on, on the show. Yes, we work together because we are both different types of law enforcement in the show. But uh, I think Deputy McClanahan, he's a, a very arrogant, very power hungry, uh, um, you know, law enforcement officer uh, in, in Wyoming, um, whose obviously goal in life is to become sheriff one day. And for some reason, he looks at Joe as someone who just gets in the way of of everything. When, uh, but when you look from an outside point of view, it's actually Joe who's doing most of the most of the uh, uh, the legal work uh, in 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 the community of Saddlestring. Um, and McClanahan is what can I say about him? Uh, these characters are based off of you know C.J. Box's creations. I mean, this these are all based off of his best selling books and. You know, he created a story, but it was it was amazing to to see how John and, and Drew Dowdle, who created this this show, um, gave the actors a bit of uh, uh, leeway as to, you know, really creating uh, their own version of those characters, but within range of what CJ Box has created. And uh, and I love what we've done with Deputy McClanahan. He's uh, he's very arrogant. He's kind of comic relief in a lot of points of view. Uh, but at the same time, he is a, a lawman and, uh, you know, he takes a lot of pride in that. OK. And uh, Chad, how did the opportunity come about for you to get cast in uh, Joe Pickett? 
I actually auditioned for several roles, actually. Um, I, I, a lot of people don't know this, but um, Oak Keeley, um, who is one of the main players in, in season one, uh, who has a lot of interactions with Joe Pickett, was actually who I auditioned for first. And um, that didn't pan out, but, uh, um, you know, fortunately, uh, John and Drew had seen it. And then they asked me to read for Deputy McClanahan. And, and I did, you know, willingly. And and thank God, uh, you know, it worked out because this is literally one of the best and funnest roles I've ever uh, been a part of. And uh, Chad, in terms of uh, the production, obviously you're based in uh, Calgary, uh, Canada, and obviously the the outback and the sort of terrain there was a, a sort of a mixed divide between sort of takes within studio and then takes in terms of offshoot sort of locations in terms of that. Were they sort of near at hand in terms of filming? Was it? Did you do a good lot of what I say box uh, shooting in terms of offset sort of shooting location shooting? For certain scenes for certain episodes at a continuous time yeah uh, we were all we it was kind of a mix of two we have the studio lots uh, where we do certain specific locations like the interior of the the picket house and then we also uh, a lot of uh, fortunately a lot of it is in nature and that's one of the best parts about being on this show is just how beautiful the sceneries are right I mean this is why they chose Canada why they chose Calgary because you know we're so close to the Canadian Rockies were, you know, an hour drive and, and from Calgary and we're there. Um, it's just it's such a gorgeous show to be part of. So when you get a film in those types of locations, I mean, there's there's no better job in the world, literally. And uh, Chad, was in terms of your character now, Deputy McLean, and, uh, was there certain sort of stunts involved? Uh, was there certain aspects that you had to learn in, in terms of that? Or did you have a sort of a, a body double? I know the season two uh, is their shooting, but we're talking about season one now. Was there certain aspects that as a character that you had to immerse yourself in fully? Yeah, no, um, I think it was mainly the, the horseback riding would be really, I don't do too many stunts or per se and and if they allow me i'll do anything that i can but a lot of times with productions you know we do have uh, an amazing stunt team um i have a, a stunt double his actual name is chad as well chad cosgrave and he's uh he's a much much better uh horseback rider than i am he's a rodeo guy and uh so he makes me look a lot better than i would do myself and did you actually partake in some of those horseback uh, riding scenes? Did you try and sort of learn? Was that sort of daunting for you at sort of first? Uh, no, um, I've I've been around horses kind of on and off like throughout my life, so I'm I'm very comfortable with horses. I love it. I mean, there there's nothing better than you know for your soul than than riding a horse, and I love it. And I'll, like I said, I'll do it as much as I can. But um, when it comes to you know the action scenes that involve the horses and stuff i'll i'll leave that to the pros because uh i mean if you've ever been kicked by a horse before man it's not a fun thing to live through so let those guys do it for some reason they love it so hey and I suppose, Chad, in terms of uh, Joe Pickett, we have a, a seasoned sort of a, a cast, but we also have some rising sort of young stars in terms of the two sort of daughters, Skywalker Hughes and Camera Plivia, who play Sheridan Pickett and sort of Lucy Pickett. And uh, I suppose seeing them grow over the sort of two seasons and being involved in the sort of that show, uh, in terms of you really seeing their budding talent uh, come to light in terms of how prominent they are in terms of the series. They're just not uh, standalone sort of characters. They really have a, a deep role to play in the success of Joe Pickett. Yeah, I mean, the kids play a major role in in, in even in CJ Box's uh, storylines, uh, um, especially Sheridan, who play, is played by Skywalker. I mean, she's got a big, big part in um, the family, um, in the decisions that Joe makes. Um, I myself McClanahan doesn't have too many scenes with them but now that I'm you know uh, kind of intertwined with the family issues and stuff uh, you know I, I do have moments with them and just watching them even from season one to season two not only have they grown in in height but uh, their skill level and talent is is you know it, it surpasses a lot of uh, you, you know young actors that I've I've worked with in the past and and I, I love watching them. They're they're very talented. I mean, you got you got Skywalker, you got Cameron, you got Ellie, you got uh, Vivian, obviously, uh, who plays April. Um, there's you know not too many times you work on shows where 
they relied that heavily on a, a big section being taken over by and and being basically acted upon by uh, kids and and they're doing great they're holding their own that's for sure and uh, Chad, in terms of uh, season one, obviously when you got when you got cast, when you sort of got taken up, uh, was there any sort of uh, assurances? Did you know that there would be a season two? Had you to reach a certain quota, or did you find out straight away, or was it a nice, pleasant surprise to hear that you would be renewed after season one? Yeah, so season one um, was a little bit different for me because I was only a recurring character at that time. Um, I I was uh, only slated to be in six of the 10 episodes in season one. And we didn't know at all. It was season one was just kind of a trial for uh, for everyone, I think. And uh, obviously to say that, you know, we were pleasantly surprised by the outcome is, is an understatement because, you know, it shattered records. It was the most streamed service on Spectrum of all time. Uh, Paramount Plus picked it up right away. And, uh, you know, now that we have three episodes going into season two and the critic reviews are already coming in, it's just one surprise after another surprise with this show. And uh, and I shouldn't really use the word surprise because if you've ever been on our set or you've worked with this cast or this crew or the production team or the writers or the creators, even CJ Box, who, you know, comes to set uh, every season or so, he, um, uh, you know, he every every aspect of this show is, is so wonderful to work and be a part of that. It's not it's not really a surprise that it's it's doing as well as it is. But this industry always likes to throw curveballs. But I, I'm just, uh, you know, pretty blessed to be part of it. And, and uh, we're enjoying the ride as as our critics. So it's great. And I suppose, Chad, in terms of that, I know it's a busy time for you, but you're also working on a, another blockbuster sort of uh, TV sort of series at the moment, dare, dare I say, in terms of Canada. It hasn't reached our shores here yet in Ireland and the UK, but I'm no doubt it will. Uh, another sort of, dare I say, you're going back a bit further in time in terms of Westerns and in terms of cowboy annuals to one of the, the great, dare I say, the legends himself, uh, the one and only Billy Dick. Kid. So quite interesting to a concept, a TV series about Billy the Kid. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, I think I think in the past, you know, there's been a lot of uh, adaptations of Billy the Kid uh, based on history and whatnot. But normally it it kind of just veers off to make an action film, an old Western thing. But uh, it was nice that uh, Michael Hurst, who created Vikings and stuff, uh, came, you know, uh, developed this uh, script where we could kind of see uh, a little bit more about who Billy the Kid really was, you know, uh, he was from Ireland, um, you know, he's a, his whole family, uh, they're, they're Irish immigrants, and they came to America, um, expecting to, to live this, this American dream, uh, only to come and find out that the American dream is false, that it's, it's not for immigrants, that it's not for everyone, and, uh, and there's a lot of really hard struggles that people have to go through, and unfortunately, in the old wild, wild west, um, you 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 understand with this show as to why it is they call it the Wild West. I mean, you could really way, really get away with anything and 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 everything if, simply put, you just don't have a witness. And it's it's pretty pretty surreal way of 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 living in society when anything and everything can happen uh, and there's no ramifications to it uh, back then. And uh, Chad, I do believe uh, you play an Irish character in this adaptation of uh, Billy the Kid. Yes, I play uh, James Dolan, who is um, uh, one of the three Irish businessmen who, in history, uh, you know, it's Murphy, uh, Murphy, Dolan, and Ryan. These are three Irishmen who uh, ultimately were responsible for starting the Lincoln County War, um, based off of greed and and uh, and taking immigrants' lands uh, rightfully, illegally, uh, uh, yeah, illegally. And I suppose, uh, Chad, in terms of that, uh, playing an Irish uh, character in Billy the Kid, has it given you a sense of uh, trying to discover if there's any bit of Irish in, Irishness in you and maybe one day visiting uh, the Emerald Isle and uh, seeing uh, Mr. Dolan, uh, why he, uh, he's uh, decided to embark from the, the green, green Isle of Ireland? Well, I, I just love the accents and everything, just your guys' dialect and stuff. And and I will say, though, um, I did six weeks of, of uh, dialect coaching before we got into this. And and it's one of the hardest accents in the planet to, 
to, to nail down. But when I did it, uh, I almost loved it more than my own or own accent. So I, I, I you know, uh, I wouldn't mind just sticking that at home and talking about it every now and then and stuff. And then, you know, drive my wife nuts every now and then, right? <laughs> And I suppose, uh, Chad, if you're very aware about studying the Irish accent, you know there's a type of four different types. There's the northern type, there's a the southern type, and then yeah. there's the Dublin sort of coast as well. So it's a different. If you went to one part of Ireland just talking the one way, you'd sound, uh, dare I say, a, a sheep out of place. Uh, that's, yes. that's for sure. So what sort of... Uh, aspect did you try and learn of the Irish accent were you uh, trying to go for a southern one or a northern one or we did yeah we, we we did a northern accent that was uh um I guess that was their decision that's where James Dolan was apparently from um so it's a very you know deep uh almost uh um action figure-esque kind of uh accent where it's just like deep and brooding and and you know uh when he says something, he gets his point across real quick, and it's 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 almost a brooding uh, Irish accent. So it's a lot of fun to play. And I suppose, uh, Chad, uh, for the final thirty seconds, now we might enlighten all our audience, all our listeners, if they've missed out on the opening episode of uh, Joe Pickett on June the eighth. Obviously, they can catch up, and there's numerous sort of formats uh, where they can catch up and watch the first episode. But why should they tune in for episode two and uh, of Joe Pickett and Chad Rook and Deputy McLennan, as the saying goes? Uh, what's in store for them? Uh, well. First and foremost, when you have a show that is based off of the number one best-selling book series by CJ Box, I mean, the storylines are already in place. But then you have these creators like John Eric Dowdle and, and Drew Dowdle, uh, who have developed this world of saddle string um, for not only the people who are living in the town, but for the viewers, right? We're really bringing uh, this already huge fan base, you know, um, uh, and what they love, uh, which is this creation of Joe Pickett and, and the world he lives in. And we're bringing it to screen. And, and there's nothing more exciting, I think, for fans and for Western fans to see characters that they became, you know, uh, to love in the books, to see them in real life. It's the same thing with anything. You look at Lord of the Rings, uh, you look at Harry Potter. It's just so much more exciting, I think, for fans when they can actually see the characters that they've imaged in their heads uh, you know, come to fruition on screen. And and Deputy McClanahan is is just one of those characters, um, like Joe, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sharon Lawrence's character, Missy. I mean, these are all major player characters in the books. And uh, you get to see uh, they each have a, a really, really fun storyline uh, in season one, uh, all on their own. And, uh, and how it culminates and everything is just a it's an amazing thing to see what John and, and Drew did uh, in line with uh, CJ Box and his stories. Uh, Chad, uh, obviously season one, a great success. Uh, season two, currently uh, filming uh, at the moment and uh, no doubt it's going to be a, a blockbuster success and uh, it's going to lead to many more uh, seasons to come in terms of the world of uh, Joe Pickett. We're just starting to get started and uh, obviously we're excited with open arms to see Billy the Kid uh, venture our shores, uh, venture across here to the pond and the, our shores here in Ireland and the UK. And uh, Chad, Rudd, uh, Chad Rook, for me, Jim Conlon, absolute pleasure talking to you on the airwaves this evening. We wish you all the best uh, for 2023. No doubt a busy time for you at the moment. Uh, but for the moment, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Thanks so much, James. Really appreciate it. Enjoy the show, guys. Appreciate it.